with that, we will get started. And I'm really excited to be joined by Vanessa from ICND. I don't know, Vanessa, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Vanessa with ICND. I'm the sales director here. I've been in the industry uh, since 2009 with ICND, and it's amazing to watch the industry change and grow, but really excited and appreciate the opportunity to come on here with you, Arthur, and talk about direct bookings. It's always my passion. Yeah. And just if you don't know everybody, my name is Arthur Kolker. I'm the founder and CEO of StayFi. And I'm so excited to be joined by Vanessa because ICND, in my opinion, has some of the highest quality and best websites out there that can really up your direct booking game uh, and get those conversions on your website. And then we're going to dive into all sorts of other strategies and tactics you can implement to be successful with your direct booking business. Just a little background on StayFi. So our mission is to empower every short-term rental operator, whether they have one listing or thousands, uh, to achieve a vibrant, independent, and more profitable brand. And we're most known for our Wi-Fi data collection tool. Uh, so we have a system just like you would find at a hotel, coffee shop, airport, where in order to access the Wi-Fi, every single guest, not just the booker, has to log on with their name, email, phone number on a captive portal, just like you've seen in those other places, to get access. And that way we collect data from everybody staying with you. And then we also have a bunch of other marketing and Wi-Fi related tools that I'll cover a little bit later that can help you both run your business and drive more bookings overall. And with ICND, like I mentioned, we are the Book Direct experts. We offer websites and digital marketing, mainly focused in the vacation rental with, of course, some overlap into real estate. We were founded in 1999, so this year we're celebrating 25 years in business, and we're literally married to the vacation rental industry with Brandon Sauls, the owner, founder, president, being married to a third-generation vacation rental manager out of Ocean Isle Beach at Sloan Realty Vacations, Whitney Sauls. So with that, it's always helped our innovation. So Brandon and Whitney talking about needs for her website and coming up with ideas like our split cost calculators. And then that has really created the foundation of how we collaborate with our, our clients. So we are able to do customizations to our core product. Once those custom customizations become uh, a feature and functionality, we release them to the rest of our clients. So um, a lot of the, the features that you see out there, ICND was the first to market with those features. And today we work with over 350 vacation rental managers across the globe. So really exciting. So why do direct bookings matter? Um, well, I guess, you know, if you're living under a rock at this point, you might not know why direct bookings matter. But um, of course, it it's really important to differentiate yourself from the OTAs. So number one, when you're not, when you're, when you're generating those direct bookings, you're not paying those fees and commissions to Airbnb and uh, VRBO and booking.com or any of those OTAs that we'll refer to them as. Uh, additionally, if you were a vacation rental manager during COVID, you remember when Airbnb canceled all of your uh, reservations. And um, so by having direct bookings, you have more control over cancellation policies, terms and conditions, um, as of course, your uh, whole booking process. And then that's also an added value to your owners. So when they're out there doing research and investigating who is the top vacation rental manager for their market, they're going to want to put their listing on your website because you rank well, you're doing great marketing, and you're the place to be outside of just Airbnb and VRBO. Pretty much anybody can go out there and market through Airbnb and VRBO, but having that direct book business really differentiates you from just that marketing source. 
And then of course there's other ways to um, increase your revenue through add-ons at checkout. So this could be offering early check-in, late checkout, um, swag. We have some clients that'll add swag and then of course travel insurance. So all around it affects your bottom line. And Vanessa, a lot of times I have clients come to us who, obviously you guys have been around for a long time, but for newer operators who grew up in the world of Airbnb, you know, a lot of times they don't think direct bookings are possible. Kind of what have you seen in terms of for someone who is just getting started? Like what's a realistic goal to set for yourself uh, for what you can possibly drive direct? Yeah, of course. So, you know, everybody is going to be a little bit different. Every market's going to be a little bit different. Um, but when you're starting out, whether you have two properties or like you mentioned, 2000 properties, there is a book direct solution for you. It, and a book direct solution doesn't have to be, you know, linking to your VRBO or Airbnb. It can be creating a website, creating an email database, and then doing some of the things that we're going to talk about with SEO, pay-per-click, social media to help prove yourself as a company and slowly but surely create those uh, repeat guests and more direct booking business. It's a slow but surely. Yes, it's not overnight, but it's just, you know, it's amazing when we see people go from zero to 10% of the bookings to 20 to 30, and it just really scales over time. And I'm sure you guys work with legacy operators that are 90 plus percent book direct, which definitely yeah. exists out there, right? Yeah. And it just, again, it depends on the market. You know, if you look at places like uh, Eastern North Carolina, the Outer Banks, where we're based out of Ocean Isle Beach, it's always been a book direct market versus if you look at some of my clients in ski market, that's where VRBO was um, created. So back when I started saying, hey, we want to create a book direct strategy. They're like, why? We're getting all these great leads from Airbnb and HomeAway. So um, it's definitely evolved and it will continue to evolve. The uh, channels are definitely important. They are a, a big uh, driver of the um, new acquisitions uh, as far as guests, but getting out there and um, getting in front of your clients and guests as far as repeat bookings is really important to your long-term success. Yeah, it's all about resilience. So why don't we hop over into the creating a, a, a book direct website and kind of what your guys' process is? Yeah, so we'll start with the homepage. When we look at user behavior on when somebody comes to your website and what they do, everybody wants to focus on that entire web page and, and everything on there. But when it comes to what people actually do, they're interacting with that first 20% of your, of your website. So this is actually a mobile screenshot. And so we find that 60 to 90% of the people that visit your website are never going to scroll below the fold there. So they're going to interact with your main menu or they're going to hit that uh, quick search. So you want to make sure both of the that information is above the fold along with where you're located. So um, a lot of times I'll go to a website and I don't even know where they're based out of or where the rentals are. So having something that makes it crystal clear, book your Smoky Mountain vacation today allows people to know exactly where your rentals are. And then additionally, you know, if we take a look at the search results page, what we do is we try to mock what's out there with Airbnb and uh, VRBO because that gives a familiar way of search for consumers. So they're looking at the listings on the left and the map on the right, the filters up top where they can come in and put their dates, they can filter down by popular amenities and filter down their, their search results. But in addition to that is the amount of content that we put on these pages because the search engines love pages with search results on them. Um, and the more, the better. So we'll build out pages for those long tail keyword phrases, like for instance, the St. Island, St. Simon Island luxury home rentals. That way we got the long-term keyword phrase um, and able to uh, direct traffic to those specific long tail keywords. And I love the dog friendly rentals because I'm sure that's like one of those long tail keywords that can really pay off, right? Exactly. Yeah. So 
Yeah. And it could be dog friendly. It could be pet friendly, but you know, being pretty specific to the keyword phrase and that intent of the user, which we'll get into more is really important for matching up and making it as effective as possible. Looking at the property detail page, and actually on our blog, we have a whole blog that goes through in detail about what makes a great property detail page. Again, we're mimicking the OTAs out there and, and what they have, but for the most part, when someone comes to this page, they're looking for two things, pictures and pricing. Those are number one and number two. And then number three would be, of course, information about the property. So it could be reviews, bedding information of how everybody's going to configure and sleep in the uh, rental policies, floor plans. Again, another great illustration of how everything's laid out. A map for location, if it's not obvious that it's got great mountain views or great ocean views or right there on the beach. Um, and then of course, in the market that we're in, the specials and savings. So having cross through pricing, the ability to automatically apply your promos to your pricing so that they can see an exact dollar amount that they're saving is really helpful and helps increase those conversions on your website. And do you guys typically recommend that people have the same photos and listing name as they have on third-party websites like Airbnb or Verbo? Absolutely, because we have seen a 62% increase in the number of people who are actually searching for property names. So like Carpe Diem in Galveston, when somebody types that in, we want our website to be the number one listing there. And we'll even add things in like aggregating reviews from all of the OTAs and um, FAQs. So that would be like crowdsourced user generated content of does this property have a Keurig coffee pot? Or I notice it has a boat dock and I bring my 19 foot center console. So, you know, just having those questions and answers allows the, uh, for more authority on that specific property and, and you should be ranking at the top. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, all of everyone involved in this industry who's pushing direct booking, we're all educating guests on that typically book direct is cheaper. And so you just want to make sure, you know, more and more guests are getting smarter and searching for the names of listings. And so I just want to emphasize again, uh, matching those names and photos can really pay off and that organic search and discovery that people have. Yeah. In the past, it was like, should we differentiate so we don't have duplicate yep. content? But now it's really just, um, it's just about making sure that you show up first. Definitely. Um, this is a great example. This is what we're terming suggested searches. And so what we've done is through Google Analytics is we're tracking what people are searching for, their dates, their number of bedrooms, their specific amenities. And that helps us create landing pages to target to. But also what we started tracking was zero search results. So when somebody would get zero search results, obviously they are more inclined to abandon the site altogether because they think that you don't have what they need. And so what we've done is created a really easy way for them to change their search and really simplify their search because when a uh, user is on the search results page, they just love to scroll. They love to look at the photos and they love to scroll and scroll and see all of the results that they can possibly get. But also they're gonna be looking for things that they're looking for specifically. Maybe it's a view. A lot of times it'll be a view or an amenity. And as they add too many of those, they may get the zero results. And so what we've done is we have created an easy way to go back to just the dates or just specific amenities so that they can kind of go to their, their prime amenity that they're looking for and look at the results just based on their top needs. And by doing this um, in the last 30 days, you know, depending on the number of properties, we've seen between 30 to 180 additional conversions based off uh, adding in this feature. So it's really been 
increasing our conversion rates and generating a lot of, of revenue for our clients. Do you guys also suggest alternative dates if there is nothing for those dates as well? Yes. So alternative dates kind of like um, what we would uh, say is like um, flexible dates. Mm -hmm. And so that's also available where they can just change their arrival date in a one click at the top. But if they get zero results, you know, basically it's generally they want those dates, but they just need to back out some of those amenities. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then of course the booking page, that's uh, definitely one that we spend a lot of time on um, because we want to keep it simple, easy, but also like we talked about in the beginning, adding that revenue with travel insurance, add-ons and checkout. But, um, you know, the biggest thing that is going to deter someone from booking across the board any e-commerce site is where you they're seeing additional fees, which in the vacation rental industry is we have those additional fees, right? And so what we've started to do is the total all-in pricing on the search results pages. Um, in California, they're actually, uh, they have a law now where you have to have that, that truth in pricing from the get-go. So whatever price they see has to be the all-in pricing. If you're in California, you really only have a couple more days because I think it's the beginning of July that you have to have that um, all together and showing on your website. But from a user perspective across the board, in most situations, it's going to be the best bet. I say most situations because if you're in a market or your competitors aren't showing the all-in pricing, then you don't want to be the highest price on the search results pages. You might want to be the base price plus taxes and fees, but certainly when they get to the property detail page, you want to have that all-in pricing and not save it for three clicks down the road to the booking page. And then in terms of this travel insurance piece, do you guys work with specific partners or have your own product? How do people usually get uh, connected to add that to the to their website? It's typically through integrations with their PMS. So okay. um, as long as their PMS that integrates in with the travel insurance that is at their leisure to decide um, who to use and what to use, but we'll do like a double opt out as well. So uh, at, as they land there, nothing is selected. But if they click no, we're going to say, hey, are you sure? Because here's all the benefits of what you'd want. Here's the total amount. You should really try to uh, get that in. So uh, that way there's no hesitation of, hey, I you know, didn't see that when I was booking online. They know for sure that they were prompted. So, and that's just such a, you know, if people aren't offering that, definitely look into what your PMS has to offer in terms of integrations, because you're just leaving money on the table when you don't have that option. Yep, exactly. Customer engagement, we want to keep those folks on the site. So um, not only when they're on the site, looking at your things to do, special offers, content uh, that you have supporting everything that your specific destination has to offer, we also want to get them, of course, to sign up for the deals and savings. So we typically have, of course, a newsletter sign up. By changing it from newsletter sign up to sign up to fantastic deals and savings, you're always giving them something in order to give that email address. Nobody just wants to pop their email address in there for for nothing. So really on every aspect of our website, whether it's a contact form, uh, price alerts, cancellation notifications, send to a friend. We always add that sign up for our deals and savings so you can be added to those lists. Technical aspects of your website, and that of course is going to be ensuring fast load speed. Uh, we're seeing anywhere from 60 to 80% of the traffic is from a mobile device usually more on the 80%, but if you've got a higher end um, rentals, then you might be seeing that 60%. 
Uh, so ensuring that your site loads the fastest as possible is so important to make sure that you keep the user on your site as well as impress the search engines. And they want to see a fast site as well, but also you want to share, show off your unique selling proposition. So if you see that term USP, that's your unique brand selling proposition, but then you also have a unique selling proposition for each property. So they're going to have their little merchandising headline to highlight what is important about them as well. We also um, have been seeing a big comeback with the loyalty and rewards. So that's something that we're offering as well now as a loyalty program where um, as folks come on your site, they can sign up for that loyalty program. And as they book with you, they can earn additional points that they can redeem into uh, dollar amounts off or swag or welcome baskets, however you want to um, customize those different tiers. And do you see uh, like overall traffic is 60, 80 mobile? Do you still, is actual booking still more likely to be on a desktop or are people making as just as many bookings on mobile devices? That's the really tough nut to crack, Arthur. It really, again, depends on the market. You know, every market is just a little bit different as far as the, the demographics that are coming. But yeah, it's just been, um, and I see that across different industries that are in e-commerce is the same, you know, high, higher mobile, but still referring back to a desktop to make that final booking. So we're working really hard to integrate in more options like Google Pay, Apple Pay, where um, it you know appears to be more secure or easier to check out, just a one-click checkout by logging into those services. Um, and so we're hoping that, and, and putting in the tracking so that once we have those in place, we can see if that helps those mobile conversions. Yeah, sure, that's great. Because I think, you know, whatever is working in a, a Shopify store e-commerce, that's going to translate over. But obviously, as the ticket item becomes higher, might still be harder to convert on mobile. But that's right. Probably yeah. keep trending that way. Exactly. And, and, you know, we're also looking at what, you know, Airbnb and VRBO are doing. We always want to try to um, mimic what they have to offer and make it as smooth and easy as possible so that everyone feels just as secure to check out on our site as they do on that platform. And what about installments or like using like a Klarna or an Afterpay? Have mm -hmm. you guys integrated with those or is that an option you see people are offering today? So far, what we've seen is a firm, which mm -hmm. they have the added interest. Um, yep. But that is, yeah. And I think, you know, it's really at a point where it's, it's integrated in with the software. So um, we're kind of waiting for software and payment processors to get up to speed on being able to offer those items as well as Klarna to be able to see, you know, uh, the vacation rental industry as an opportunity. So they've been growing pretty fast as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, happy just to kind of, uh, I know now we're gonna move into driving more website traffic. And we're going to dive into a ton of areas from Wi-Fi market, which is obviously Stayfy specialty. And then we'll jump over to some of ICND's focus, like social media, SEO, which we covered a little bit, PPC, which I think it's a, a great topic because it's one that you really need to work with an expert to do well. You know, email marketing, you can definitely get away with it doing it yourself or working with a partner. But when you get into uh, paid Google ads definitely need third-party expertise to be successful. And then we can talk a little bit more about email and SMS. Uh, just a little more info on StayFi and how it works for somebody in a short-term rental property. Uh, if you implement StayFi, like I talked about before, we're bringing in that same experience with Wi-Fi login that you've seen at a ton of different hospitality locations, whether it's a Starbucks or an airport. When a guest joins the network in your property, they get taken right away to this page we call the splash page or the captive portal. And this can be branded by home or overall for your entire business. It's totally up to you. 
So everything on this page is customizable. And then we will always collect name and email, but you can also add other fields like phone number or text marketing, for instance, or birth date. If you want to send out special offers or screen for a certain age in order to do enroll people into email marketing. Uh, once the guest hits connect, they get taken to this other page that you also create in Stafi called the home page. You can think of the home page like a link tree for your listings. Uh, so it's going to be this page where you can have all the essential links for this property in one place for the guest to access. That would be things like going to a guidebook, book this property again, go to your website. And then we have a ton of upsell partners that you can link to, whether it's the host co because you want to sell uh, your own amenities or things like early check-in, late checkout, stay extension, mid-stay cleans. Uh, and then you can also connect to Viator so you can get an 8% commission from activity and tour sales uh, that guests discover through here as well. And then finally, uh, all the data we're collecting, we integrate with both our own email and text marketing tool as well as just about any other tool that you could imagine out there. Uh, so we'll send the data to wherever you'd like so that you can then go and email and text your guests. Uh, and all the, you know, on average, we'll get around 80 to 90% of all of the adults' emails during the course of the stay. So if you have 10 guests staying in your property, you'll get eight or nine contact details through the course of that stay. Uh, yeah, and then this thing is a little bit more on driving uh, email collection through the website as right as well, Vanessa, right? Yep. And I love your product because like you mentioned, a lot of times when somebody's using Airbnb or VRBO, they don't get the email address of the user. And I get that question often of, well, how do I collect it other than just manually asking for the email? So having something like StayFi to collect the email address of not only who's booking, but also who's staying. Because I know for myself, um, I stay with my best friend. It might be my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, you know, so it could be quite a few other opportunities that are staying with the reservation that I would never have at my fingertips without that product. So growing your email list is a really important part of email marketing. And I think that StayFi does a great job of doing that along with things like, uh, like we mentioned, all of the opportunities on your website to collect email addresses and feature that opt-in, the email modal pop-up, that is like an old school one. We've been doing that probably 10 years now, but still today, uh, the way that works is with an email modal pop-up is, you, you know, you can set it on your homepage, which is not going to be the greatest integra integration. But if you set it in the booking funnel, you have somebody who's actively engaged looking at properties and it pops up and it says, hey, to save $25 now, enter your email address. They enter their email address. They automatically get that promo code. You can track it. And you can, of course, collect the email address. So we see, you know, in a, a season, hundreds of emails collected. And at one point, you know, it was about 250,000 and one summer generated just off of the email modal pop-up. So I definitely think that's a great way to collect emails and um, keep, keep adding new emails to your list. Um, and then it has to be a good email too in order for them to get that email code. So you know that it's an actual great email. And then based on those emails, of course, you've got, um, you've got to co still collect more information. Where are they from? When are they coming to visit? What do they want to do while they're there? What are their interests? Do they have kids? And then start personalizing those campaigns based on the information that you're collecting about that user. So I'm based out of Myrtle Beach, which is just south of Ocean Isle Beach, golf, beach, snowbirds. You've got drive to market with Charlotte and Columbia, and then you have fly to market that's anything east of the Mississippi outside the three or four hour drives. So being able to target based on if I have three or four night stays in specific properties, or I need longer stays in larger homes and um, fly to market. So you're able to take your inventory 
and personalize and target different lists when you're collecting it correctly and storing it correctly. Yeah, that's so important, especially with uh, aligning your available inventory with your marketing. And I think that's something a lot of people forget about. Uh, mm -hmm. But then they start, you know, they email the wrong inventory to the wrong guests. Um, you know, you don't want to email a two night stay to somebody who flies to your market uh, when you really should be targeting your drive to guests. So I think that's such a great point there. Yeah. As you list gets bigger, you can become more advanced. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think one of the other areas, so here is kind of the um, little more on email and text marketing within Stay Fine. We talked a lot about collecting and I guess we didn't so much talk about nurturing data. Vanessa sort of brought it up with the whole give get offer in the booking funnel. I think a lot of people when they're starting out with email marketing, they're a little intimidated by committing to emailing their entire list every month or every other month, uh, which you definitely you want to get to that point eventually. Uh, but a great way to start out is how do you nurture your emails by setting up an automation? So an example of that in StayFi would be, for instance, you collect an email through the Wi-Fi. Then I'm going to trigger an email automatically to that guest. And because we know they're in the property, this is a great time to show what value you can add to the stay. Especially if you imagine most of the data we're collecting is from non-bookers. So they've never interacted with your brand. They haven't received any of the pre-stay messaging. How can you then introduce your brand to those guests? Provide your, for instance, local favorite activities, tips, partners that you want to recommend, as well as, of course, explaining how at the end, hopefully, if they want to return, uh, coming back directly to you is the best option. Uh, and then that's kind of a great way to step your toes into email marketing. And you would want to do the same thing for people that submit on your website uh, or submit to get a give get right. You want to give them that, uh, let's say, $25 off right away. And then maybe you want to follow up with them in the future. And then over time, I would say then once you collect 500 or 1,000 emails, uh, that's where you can really start getting into sending a monthly newsletter uh, and start to optimize the content. As Vanessa mentioned before, knowing who your guests are, what are the reasons they're coming to travel to your destination? Do you have very different segments of guests like drive to guests versus guests that are flying from another market and might you might want to advertise them different types of inventory and availability at that point? So I'd say at the beginning, you want to start with automated emails. You can be more generic. And then as your list grows, it becomes or it would behoove you to start investing more into that personalization and segmentation because you'll start getting better results. So I'd say don't get intimidated at the beginning by making the perfect the enemy of the good. It's just important to start emailing and then over time uh, you'll become, you know, you can really step up the personalization to start targeting very specific segments in your list. Um, here's just an example of an email automation in StayFi. Uh, just so you get a sense of kind of where people are starting and what type of content that they're sending. Uh, this is an example of an email being sent right when someone logs into the Wi-Fi. Uh, and they're sharing kind of three key things here. Uh, the first is introducing the brand and letting guests know how they can contact uh, the brand for any help during the stay. Uh, and in this case, they know that 60, 70 percent of their guests right now are coming from OTAs. So they're kind of making the assumption that most guests don't really know who Juniper is and think that you're a quote unquote Airbnb or Verbo. And we want to start making that differentiation both on the splash page and in the content here. Uh, and then second of all, they want to really push their concierge services. In this case, uh, they have in-house concierge to help book other activities or events in this case, Michigan. Uh, but we have other customers that just rely on third-party integrations, whether it's with the Hostco or Viator to sell third-party activities, which you can also do here. So you're not only providing value to the guests by sharing your favorite recommendations, but you also can make revenue if anyone ends up booking any of those activities or tours. And then finally here, they're not really pushing uh, staying again that hard, but at the end, they just kind of showing off that they, yes, they have more inventory than just this one property. And that booking direct is a great option if you want to have the same fantastic Juniper experience again. And then if you see here on the right, 
This is what our visual automation builder looks like. So guest enters Wi-Fi segment, they get this email. And then five days later, they're getting another email. And that email is more oriented around booking again. So in that case, they talk a little bit more about how booking direct will always be less expensive than an OTA. And then I believe in this case, they also really push the concierge services because that's a big differentiation than a generic quote unquote Airbnb because you offer that extra support to provide a wonderful stay. So really lean into whatever kind of your differentiation is uh, from what you would consider a generic short-term rental booked on an OTA. Uh, and here's a little more ideal idea of what people are sending out on a monthly basis. Um, this is actually an interesting example because uh, this operator, their list is pretty big, uh, but right now they connect, they collect emails on their website and they actually don't know if right now, if that person is a potential guest or a potential homeowner. So in all of their monthly communication, they also intersperse some content about being a high quality property manager and how to get in contact with them if you want them to manage one of your properties. So you can see here, they start with a blog post that they connect the newsletter to, which they call the Juniper Journal, and they keep that pretty consistent month to month. And then the second and third section are a little bit more about property management. Then they feature four properties. Again, push their concierge, because for them, that's their big differentiator from a generic quote unquote Airbnb. And then finally, uh, explore a Michigan location. So you can see here they're accomplishing a few goals in this email. And I think one thing that they found is that by including property management services in all of their newsletters, uh, that's helped them grow their portfolio as they get you know a few inquiries from each one of these emails. I know, Vanessa, how do you guys generally approach the uh, property manage kind of offering that service on the website versus what we mainly talked about, which was driving bookings for, for, from guests or potential guests. Yeah, definitely a clear call to action, uh, throughout the website. Just like you mentioned, a lot of times they're going to go check you out your entire site. And, and so, um, it's really hard to hone in on marketing and, and the website, to just owner acquisition. So we definitely will create a dedicated landing page. So whether it says list with us or property management services, click here, and then having that page or even a dedicated website to explain what makes them a great property manager. And I think also to that tune, it also helps explain to the consumer and the guest that they're not Airbnb. And that they have, you know, they're, there's more than just a website. They are professional property manager, and this is how they take care of the home. And this is why you want to stay with a professional property manager. So I, I do feel like that content is really important and goes hand in hand. Totally. Uh, now this is definitely more your guys, uh, focus. So I'll hand it over to you because this is definitely gets more technical. So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah help our audience uh, understand SEO or a little sure. better. And I think that this is a good tool. Um, SEM Rush has a free version of it. So before you do the paid version, like we have as an agency, you can play around with it in a, in a um, free version. It's not going to give you all of this information, but it'll give you a good test. I always love to give people information to know, to be enough to be dangerous, right? To make sure that the company that they're using for SEO is approaching it with the right strategy. And so what the keyword magic tool does is it's going to give you a list of keywords and then also the search volume. So that's going to be the number of monthly searches and then the keyword density is going to be your competition. So the more people that are searching for or adding those keyword phrases to their site, the more competition there is for those keyword phrases and the harder it is for you to, to really get rankings for it. So with Outer Banks Vacation Rentals, you know, obviously Outer Banks Rentals is going to be in the number one. But um, Outer Banks Vacation Rentals is really a little bit more toned into 
having a vacation as part of that rental. And then there's the different variations of, um, of what there is to offer. And then of course you can go in and identify those long tail keyword phrases. So it might be you specialize in condo rentals in the Outer Banks. So Outer Banks condo rentals. If you're in a ski market, you want to be careful not to assume that the keyword phrases are vacation rentals because a lot of times it might be lodging or cabins and not even have rentals in there. So you have to know what to, you have to know your market and you have to know what people are searching for and kind of play around with it. But this is great because you're able to see that volume. So you might assume it's Vail vacation rentals, but it's actually Vail lodging. You might assume it's Smoky Mountain vacation rentals, but it's really Smoky Mountain cabin rentals. So this kind of clears those up as the most popular keyword phrases and then finding those opportunities of where your inventory fits the best. Maybe it's luxury, maybe it's three bedroom condos, maybe it's uh, oceanfront, maybe it's uh, rentals with pools or hot tubs. So that's what we do is we dig into your inventory. We'll look what you have to offer as far as amenities, what kind of search results you have to, to offer that fit those keyword phrases. And then we'll build content based on those keyword phrases. And 47 for keyword density, where does that rank in terms of easy, medium, very hard to rank for? Where where would you think this falls in that kind of, what's realistic maybe to expect? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty high. So that 47 is, is pretty high. And then if you look down to the Outer Banks Vacation Rentals Oceanfront at 34, that's where you're going to have uh, less volume. So only a thousand per month are looking for that, but the number of keyword phrases that are out there going after that keyword, um, that long tail keyword phrase is less. So you have a better opportunity to get ranked there quicker. Sure. Yeah. But of course that's going to be all dependent on how you can optimize your website to fit those keyword phrases. So, um, you know, a cute, uh, phrase that we always use is Google doesn't rank a site. It ranks a page and it ranks that page based on that keyword phrase that you're going after. So what you want to do is create content. Content is going to be text. It's going to be pictures, videos, it's going to be blogs, landing pages, all around you providing that you're an authority based on that keyword phrase. Um, in addition to that, also sending links back to that page to prove that not only you say you're an authority, but others say that you're an authority on that keyword phrase as well. I just had a question. I I know personally, I've started to do some trip planning on chat GPT and asking it, you know, where should I visit on this upcoming trip? Uh, can you even see in Google Analytics or anywhere any traffic from that for any clients? Or is it still pretty minimal, you think, uh, how many people are discovering uh, brands through an AI search tool? Yeah. Do you, do you get that question a lot now? Well, we do get that question uh, a good bit. Of course, with like BARD, you'll see BARD in the Google search results. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, basically what you're doing is you're looking at how to answer those questions in your content, right? But as far as like tracking how that's referring to from, the, from chat GPT or from BARD to the website, Bard would be hard because it's just engulfed in your search results, but yep. from chat GPT, you know, it's the way it's linked over. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if, uh, how, how that gets implemented in some of these SEO tools to see if we have like AI ranking results versus uh, traditional SEO results. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's definitely to be determined and I can, um, follow up with, Paul and Chris and the rest of the team um, with some more specifics on it, but it really does get into that technical aspect, which is what they're the best at. And that's, you know, digging into the code. So like you might be able to write 
the content to fit that specific um, question that might be asked with the content that you're answering. But if you don't have it marked up correctly in schema and the correct way in the code, then the likelihood of it being indexed, you know, is not as great as if you have it like ready to go. So basically the formatting that they want. Um, yeah. And then of course, you know, page speed, things like that, those, that, um, those basics are always going to be important when it comes to the technical on page aspects of your SEO. Yeah, I know I do this for our own website all the time uh, and see how we're doing. Because even small changes, you'd be surprised, uh, might impact this. So oh, yeah, you change an image. Watching. Yeah, you change, change an image, and all of a sudden it's huge and it's logging yeah. down the site. Yep. Yeah, but this one, if you just search uh, Google PageSpeed Insights and you want to check out for your own website or brand, you know, go do that and you'll you'll definitely get some interesting results. So definitely encourage anyone to do that. Yeah. And check out your competitors too, because yeah. your feelings might get hurt. But then once you go look at your competitors. <laughs> you might realize you're not doing so bad. Yeah. We'll even look at like Airbnb and VRBO. You know, a lot of times they're not doing so hot on their page speed insights either. You know, there's so much to load in there. There's the third party scripts and everything, pictures. It's not like, um, you know, back in the day, the articles and things like that always ranked at the top because they have no pictures. They're all text. They can put a million keyword phrases in there, but that's not how you sell a vacation rental. They want to see all the pictures. They want to see all the pricing and things that make the, the page speed go down, but you know, you got to have it on there and it's still Balancing ranked. Act. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's trying to figure it out, but, um, pay-per-click goes hand in hand with SEO. Like you, you mentioned, um, to me, actually, I feel like you need more of that technical person to be able to complete SEO where like pay-per-click, um, there, there are definitely a lot of time intensive programs, but there's a lot more teaching you how to do pay-per-click and tracking with pay-per-click where SEO is more of like an art. There is the basics, but there is just a lot that you need to know technically in order to actually rank a website. But pay-per-click is great because let's say we look at your website and we determine that these are the best long tail keyword phrases, popular keyword phrases that we think we should be going after but it takes a lot of time. You know, it's going to take three to six months for you to see movement, but it might take years for you to get that number one placement because we've got to challenge whoever's in that number one spot for uh, organically. But with pay-per-click, we can kind of jump the ranks and we can also track conversions. So if we want to look at specific keyword phrases and see how well we convert, then it's a win-win. We know that we're focused on the right keyword phrases. We know that we're um, making the right choices and can go with full confidence that we need to go all in on the specific keyword phrase because you convert really great on it. A lot of times, obviously, um, the brand keyword phrase is going to convert 100%. You know, so if you bid on your keyword, your um, brand keyword phrase you're going to see a good amount of traffic and conversions off that brand. It doesn't necessarily mean that your pay-per-click is doing that great because those are people who are going to be searching for you anyways. The only reason why you want to bid on it is to protect your brand from competitors bidding on it, but also um, you have more control over what that ad is going to feature. So if this wasn't a sponsored ad, it's Google that's choosing what is there, the headline, the text, and even those snippets underneath. But as a paid ad, you can say where you want it to go. So specials, all properties, you could even have owner acquisition link in there in order to direct the traffic in that paid ad. And one great feature in Stafe, I'll just point out is we have a um, review collection through our text marketing tool. So I notice here four stars, on the right here, I'd say, you know, that's probably not where you want to be. You want to probably be four, five, four, eight. And I know we've helped some brands collect 
thousands of reviews to to get up to that close to five star mark. So definitely something where StayFi slots right in because we can get all those non booking guests a uh, screen for five star reviews and then push them to Google. Yeah. And I think I, when I was talking about technical uh, setup here, I really just think um, if you don't work with somebody who understands how to do the conversion measurement and also understands as a property manager what return on ad spend you need to achieve, because obviously every dollar you're collecting is not going to you, right? It's going, yeah. you're splitting it with an owner. So kind of uh, what does that process look like to kind of calibrate you know, what return on ad spend is a goal for, for a property manager? We're usually looking um, at 10 to one, but we've mm -hmm. gotten as high as 30 to one. So, you know, that's, that's, and that's, you know, taking a look at, like you mentioned, the revenue that we're generating, calculating our commission versus what we're spending. So okay. not our commission, but their commission. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're really being aggressive and pay-per-click is one of the number one ways that you can get conversions, but it does depend on how much inventory you have. So I wouldn't, if you only have three Outer Banks rentals, I'm not going to put an Outer Banks rentals keyword phrase in there and expect for it to convert. I would have to look at your inventory and see, okay, are they pet-friendly homes? Are they oceanfront pet-friendly homes that are three bedrooms? So that's where you're looking for that intent to book and then directing the traffic there. And it might not be enough volume of search to get you your results until you build that inventory. Yeah. And I've seen other people come and tell us that uh, PPC didn't work, but they were doing it too, like not to. Uh, to a PMS built website. And, you know, that's the other thing. If you don't have a great website that will convert and give the person right when they click the information they're looking for, you know, yeah. that's where you're going to see a lot of fall off. So you definitely have to pair the right PPC strategy, but also with the great website behind it. You really need both things to be successful. At least that, that's what I've seen. Yeah, I agree. We have another great blog article by our, our digital marketing team about that. Like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Should I get a new website or should I put in the marketing dollars? And we agree, we feel like it should be put into the website first as like your platform. And then that will guarantee more conversions. It's hard yeah. for us to market or even do an SEO on a site that can't be optimized. Yeah, website will make every advertising dollar, whether it's Stayfy, email, PPC, it's the core to make all of those things uh, have a great return. Agree. Social media. This is um, probably my favorite and a lot of people's favorite, but probably the most underly used just because tracking the conversions is a bit hard. But, you know, when you look at the amount of time that's spent on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, you know, all of those different social media platforms to not put emphasis on your social media strategy, you're definitely missing out. So um, the 80-20 rule still applies where you've got to be 80% entertainment and 20% promotional. So you've got that 80% luring them in with pretty pictures, information, and then that 20% of, oh, I finally hit you with the right promotion at the right time to get you to become a customer. So um, yeah, definitely want to keep that. And then the, you know, big buzz word right now is the user generated content. You've been collecting user generated content since you've been <laughs> getting your first uh, reviews. So reviews would be definitely user generated content, but there are a lot of ways to get user generated content from the people who are staying with you. So um, whether you do that out in social media campaigns to show that you're sharing other people's content, you can do social media uh, contests or even offering a small discount of, hey, would love to know how your experience was, tag us on social media. If we use your pictures, we'll give you a $25 off or something like that. Just to, again, track it, but also um, 
generate that content in any which way. Yeah, this is one where I've seen a lot of people push this uh, using StayFi just because you have that touch point typically on the first day right when the guest logs in. And then in that first email and or te text message that you trigger, uh, that's where you can have that campaign or or let guests know about a contest you're running or any of the, uh, those things. And then uh, they get pretty, you know, pretty substantial increase in results just because uh, maybe the booker isn't the type of person that would do this, but they're staying with obviously friends and family who are bigger into social media and want to tag the brand and have that interaction. Uh, sure. And you'll see a lot of organic growth by doing that. Yeah. Like I think about like, um, let me see your view, you know, like mm -hmm. upon coming in, you just checked in, let, let us see your view, tag us in Instagram, do your reel, you know, do your post and tag us in it because I feel like that's like the most impressive for me from an outside looking in, I walked in the cabin, I come in and I see these amazing mountain views, you know, or I walk into the condo, open up the doors an amazing ocean breeze. Like that's what's going to sell me and it being from an actual person in the world of AI, we're going to just have a big first for very genuine posts and things like that. Um, and this is one with, uh, flip two. So like share your story. Flip two is a great one to like start to collect some of the user generated content. And then obviously you want to be interacting. So when someone comes onto your site and you post some of that information or you make a post and they're talking about how much they love your brand, make sure you're interacting and encouraging that feedback. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Flip2. We just had someone ask us about this and I had was not familiar with it. And we just, uh, on that homepage where every guest is taken to when they log in, we added a tile for that uh, oh. because they want to have that in front of every guest. So I hadn't heard of it. So it's just funny that you mentioned it because that yeah. definitely seems like an awesome tool to to collect right. that. You just... And it's been around for a while, to be yeah. honest. I think yeah. that just in, we're finally getting into that era where we are figuring out how to use that information. Totally. It's a great way to collect it. Oh, and then the one other thing I want to ask you is what about paid social? Uh, do you guys do much there and kind of what's your general uh, view on doing paid social media advertising? Yeah. So paid social, we're focusing a lot on the um, remarketing ads. So somebody who's been to your website and we want to get them back to your website. So hitting them up on the socials where they're spending most of the time with just your brand and that, that billboard effect. So um, definitely with the, the paid social and um, you know, not so much with like promoted posts and things like that, but every Every client is different. So it's really about tailoring based on their goals and needs and, and figuring out what's going to be best for them and their brand. Yeah, I say one thing that, um, you know, I definitely agree that just spraying and praying with paid social is probably not going to be successful, but it's all about narrowing down that audience to who is relevant for your brand and people that visit your website definitely up there. The other thing I've seen people do is on within StayFi, you can pixel your splash pages as well. So everybody in the property, you can also create an audience against that. So uh, we have folks that, you know, right when the person loads Instagram for the first time in the property, they see your ad right there. That's uh, awesome. Kind of increase that brand awareness just for a short period. Uh, yeah. Just because we know that for a lot of people who are in this Airbnb mindset, it's going to take a lot of impressions for them to kind of realize that you're not Airbnb. And the more yeah. we can do that differentiation, the better. They say seven uh, times. You got to hit it with yeah. seven times. Totally. And one more thing about uh, social media is the Pinterest. Pinterest is used more as a search engine. So when we do our Pinterest ads there, that's actually trackable. Um, and we get a bit more return on investment with those specific targeted ads. And I feel like um, as long as we don't get weighed down in um, a lot of regulations, like a lot of times with the, the ads and social media right now, because we're vacation rentals, we get tied into real estate. And so trying to get around all those regulations and target well has been 
challenging, but I feel like TikTok is the next one to um, really be part of the travel exploring because it's like taking Pinterest and bringing it to life with videos. So I feel like that one is going to be the next one where we'll start to see a good return on investment. It's also about getting our demographic that is the one to book. Yes. Really using that. So um, yeah, so we definitely want to look at the demographics of your target audience and then pair that well with your, your social media strategy. Yeah. I mean, I feel TikTok demographics are changing. It's definitely going more Big it's time. not only confined to Gen Z or people of a certain age. So I think that definitely, I know the advertising tools are not quite as sophisticated as the meta tools in terms of retargeting and all those things, but I'm sure all of that will come with time. Uh, yeah. So we're pretty much at an hour. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, feel free to add them. I feel like we covered a lot in this pretty general overview of digital marketing and websites. So a great intro if anybody is looking to dive into this topic more for their business. Uh, I know for StayFi, we have a promo code that you can use on our website when you sign up for StayFi, which is ICND. Pretty easy to remember. And that will give you 50% off the first three months of StayFi. And then do you want to talk a little bit more about the offer from you guys? Yeah. So we just uh, chimed in to use the promo code STAYFI, make it easy for you guys. And then you'll get 50% off your first three months of hosting when you use that code during the sales process. So make sure you ch chat with your sales rep and um, that's our website, icnd.net. And you can reach me at vhumes at icnd.net uh, about anything that you'd like to chat about as far as direct booking platform or digital marketing. Awesome. Thanks again, Vanessa. This was fantastic yeah. information. Yeah. And like I mentioned, this recording will get posted on StayFi's YouTube channel. So if you want to watch any part of it again, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their week and a great July 4th. So thank you again, Vanessa. Thank you, Arthur. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care.